Welcome back, everyone, to SGDQ 2021 Online. I know we've been enjoying the silly block here. I hope you have been, too. Still got a couple donations rolling through here. We have a $50 donation from Tina saying, Just like many other people, I have felt like a fish out of water this last year. Happy that at least GDQ is a constant. Looking forward to life events again, and good luck to the runners. We have a $10 donation from Marnie saying, My boy, this Faces of Evil run is what all true warriors strive for. -ha 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 -ha. <laughs> and with that being said, next up on Silly Block is a game I know you all have maybe seen some memes on the internet or seen its hilarious cutscenes. <laughs> Either way, here is Link, the Faces of Evil, all cutscenes with Gruntmeister. The floor is yours. All right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Good morning um, if you're in Europe. Good evening, good night if you're in, uh, in the US. If, you, if this is the first thing you'll see when you wake up, I'm sorry. If this is the last thing you'll see before you go to sleep, I'm sorry. OK? I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, nah. All right. Um, I'm joined here with a commentary, an actual live commentary that uh, will actually be talking. Uh, do you want to int introduce yourself? Hi, I'm PDT1060, um, CDI collector and speedrunner. I think I technically still have the record for 100% for Faces of Evil. I mean, on the cheat box, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do use the cheater machine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, other than that, I have two other commentaries. One is on the floor at the moment, the other one is on the couch here. Uh, Biscuit, as you know, uh, he may join on the couch at one point because uh, he's a bit overwhelmed by the other commentator, Fleury, here, which is a three month old puppy. I hope he'll stay asleep because otherwise I'll have teeth mark or teeth in my arm. And uh, that's it's going to be hilarious, actually. But uh, let's just uh, get into the boot menu at least and uh, give you all the full CDI experience. So uh, start enjoying this. Never gets old. Classic. I mean, all things considered, the music in the in the intro sounds a bit ominous, and it, in general, yeah. like the music in this game is so good. Yeah, the, the music so, for the the music is way better than it has any right to be for this game. Like it is, it is top quality music for a mediocre at best game. Yeah, so everyone just enjoy the bangers tonight. Uh, enjoy the cutscenes because uh, we're going to get right into it. So let's count it down at three, two, one. Let's go. Gee, it sure is boring around here. My boy, this piece is what all true warriors strive for. I just wonder what Ganon's up to. Your Majesty, Ganon and his minions have seized the island of Korodai. Hmm, how can we help? It is written, only Link can defeat Ganon. Great, I'll grab my stuff. There is no time, your sword is enough. How about a kiss, for luck? You've got to be kidding. Squadola, we are off! Wow, what are all those heads? These are the faces of evil. You must conquer each. I guess I'd better get going. Here is the map. Where do you wish to go? All right, these cutscenes never get old for me, and I love how they uh, basically swapped around, like, actually go to the game map and have Link Hoover over it. Um, but PDT, uh, just explain what we're going to do here, because uh, I'll be uh, farming a little bit. Cool, okay, yeah. So we're starting out in Nortinka here. It's a snow level. Um, basically, what we're doing to start out is these uh, dudes with the spears, which are 
in Zelda 2 enemy moblins yeah there we go um have snowballs the snowballs are the only uh, item that can beat the fire diaries that are in the next level so uh whether we want to or not uh, this is required double dip in this uh level and actually for all cutscenes we'll be going here a third time as well um in regular 100 percent you would just go in here twice but yeah we're so we're just farming up to get some uh snowballs here we're taking some intentional deaths this game is kind of like um, in Zelda 2, where you have a certain number of lives and then it's game overs. Uh, the game overs in this just take you back to the main men or to the main map. So a few times throughout the run, we'll be taking some intentional deaths to get there because it's faster than going to the beginning or end of the level. And then a few other times we'll be doing it for uh, just a health refill. But yeah, you get three deaths and then it'll kick you back out to the map. Yeah. So. Um something to note here like this is a big difference compared to uh one panel that you've seen during hgtq like uh because we have snowballs here and fire stones eventually that's a different mechanic than you, you would get in uh, one panel uh, because these are all consumable items uh, enemy drop them and everything it's uh it's an interesting way of dealing with things um i kind of like it actually like it gives this uh linked face of evil a bit of a different charm than one camel at least to me The same company and basically they've pooled their resources to try to make functional games they say hey we're going to take all the money we're going to build the same thing and have a slightly different game but the, the differences that are in here are what makes it interesting yeah the whole issue that uh, they had back in the days uh was that phillips didn't really believe in games at that point so um games calls really little budget um th these games uh they got seven hundred thousand uh dollars each uh, which wasn't that much even for those uh, those times. Um, but if you compare that with uh, a launch title like a Sm uh, Tour of Smithsonian, like a like museum education game, that one got over $1 million just to be made. All right, so here this, we have this cut, first cutscene. This, cut yeah, this yeah, cutscene is fantastic. Uh, check out this fisherman's feet if you're into feet content, because they are terrifying. Biggest crab I ever caught. <laughs> it's a goma. You're pretty good. Here. Thanks. All right, it's coming up. Keep going, boy. You're doing real well. Once you get rid of Ganon, we can get back to fishing. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. um, I love that. So I, I love that the animators just over over animate all the hands and feet and stuff like to, to compensate for for the quality they just decided to move everything they possibly could in every possible cutscene yeah th um, there's a fun thing to mention about uh oh, of course, close to there. um there's a fun thing to mention about these cutscenes um the fact that they look the way they are uh, they do is because uh, it all has to be streamed of uh a one speed uh, CD reader. Like, it's really slow, so you have like 150 uh, kilobytes per second. Oh, here we go. Dyra's came straight from the crater till I boarded the vent. Used a skull for a latch, and not one Dyra's figured it out. This cutscene confused me for so long when I was a kid. Like, I just couldn't make out what she was saying, even in the Dutch version. Like, her accent is so thick in that version. It's so difficult. But uh, we did progress through this uh, some before. Um, so yeah, I already got uh, the, uh, the key that was in the skull, and uh, we can just enter the cave now. We still have the snowball selected because it was the first item we grabbed, so I don't have to go into the menu, which is uh, nice. Just dodge that uh, hatchet right there. But yeah, as I was mentioning, um, because uh, the uh, disc reader is only one speed, uh, you have very little room uh, to work with uh, streaming-wise. So ha having like um, as a lot of uh, um, constant colors basically to uh, stream made it a lot more efficient, and that's why they look as flat as they do. Even though the CDI is capable of better than this, um, it's just uh, the way they went, and uh, that's honestly part of the charm. <laughs> I really like them, but like they really don't get old to me. There we go. Make sure not to fall in the lava here. It's really easy to fall in if you because uh, you lose momentum as soon as you use a, an item or a sword in uh, the stage. So yeah, we just uh, farmed a few uh, firestones. Uh, it should be good uh, for the rest of the run. Like uh, I'll get a few more 
on the way in another level, but uh, other than that, we're all set. And now we can enter this house that uh, comes from the key that I just grabbed earlier in Nartenka. Make sure to snipe the, uh, yeah, there's game sound, yeah. Uh, hmm. I, I still see it, it happening. Should we wait a moment? I'm still seeing, I'm still seeing uh, game audio on my uh, sound bar. All right. All right. Uh, can do that, but I'm not sure how actually does this just Elgato into things. Oh, that's, that's really weird. Yay, we did it. <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, did I do this already? Okay, yeah. So I do uh, three, two, one. Go back. All right, uh, we should be back. Seems to have been a small mishap, but at least you should have audio again. Like this uh, area is pretty uh, low on audio anyway. It's all good, like, we're doing this for fun. So um, let's uh, burn this uh, uh, Hamsha, who is uh, frozen in the fountain. Here, have some water of life. <laughs> my, you're thirsty. Oh my goodness. And she's frozen again. Stay hydrated, everyone. Always stay hydrated. I have my bottle of water here as well. All right, so now we're going to climb uh, this mountain, which is an uh, absolute pain because there's a lot of abominum here. Uh, I will grab some of the snowballs that uh, drop here, just have as a backup. I'm sniping two of at once with one firestone because that will reduce how many firestones I'm using. And you have time for a quick donation here. Awesome. Yeah, we have we have plenty. This is a, this is a great one. We have a fifty dollar donation from Retro saying, "It's yours, my friend." <laughs> as long as you uh, have enough rubies. <laughs> uh, right. One more? Uh, in a moment. I'll get okay. one cutscene going here. And uh, also feel free, feel free to join in uh, on this. Uh... I am the reader, Ipo. If you bring me the book of Koridai, I will gladly read the secret verse. I mean, uh, Ipo uh, will read the secret verse of the book of Koridai and the book of Koridai. Uh, like, I'm wondering how secret it is if she knows or if he knows about it. Uh, you can uh, read a non donation here, or two, or three. Sure. sure. We have a $50 donation from Uber Snake saying, gotta donate for my boy. My boy. We have a another $50 donation from Dude Master 40 saying, saying, Squadala, we're off. <laughs> Squadala is like the best sentence in the game. So good. <laughs> a $25 donation from CDI Link saying, Golly. <laughs> You'll get to see that one later. <laughs> Spoilers. All right. So we're now uh, heading down uh, this house. And there's a woman here, Alora, who uh, has a tragic story to tell. You're not afraid of dragons, are you? Ooh. Of course not. Then get my necklace back from Gliok, OK? Pretty please. <laughs> I mean, terrifying cutscene. <laughs> definitely terrifying, and I actually died there. That's, that doesn't happen often, but it was uh, part of the risk that I took here. Yeah. It's all fine. It's all for a good cause. So normally you'd uh, stay crouched up, and yeah, you won't really get hit by the, the articles. It's fine. I mean, I otherwise had to take it death here anyway. Yeah, that is one weird thing with this game, or in addition to all the other weird things. The hitboxes in this game work really strange, especially with flying enemies. Um, in a lot of cases, we'll see that, uh, this in the next stage, or one of the next stages, uh, way more. But uh, when Link is jumping, it's really hard to get hit by a lot of enemies, because the hitboxes kind of go in weird, in weird uh, locations. Yeah, especially uh, the spare fish, indeed, in the next... Uh... Yeah. Next stage. Uh, well, one stage after that, uh, that will do. 
definitely uh, have, they have uh, difficulty uh, hitting notes, you look great. Right, so here we just climb the lighthouse, uh, it's near the end of the stage at least. We do have to get back to the stage once more, uh, because uh, we were sent on the quest uh, to get the necklace uh, by Aurora. And that will eventually give us a reward that we need, and a cutscene of course. Yet mighty dark with all the evil about. Keep this lantern full, it'll light your way. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Not more. many left, Link. There's Drolik round the side of Glutko. Aye. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, so yeah, we basically just got the, the lantern. We unlocked uh, Firestone Lake, which has an absolute banger soundtrack. We'll get to hear that soon. And um, we got a hint uh, for Glutko, uh, one of the later stages, about uh, a Corridian that is still alive there. I actually got hit there, I missed two shots. That's fine. I mean, uh, at the end of uh, this little farming round, uh, I can just leave and enter the stage again. I got two of the green rubies already, like uh, that's something nice to mention here. Uh, green rubies are worth five rubies in this uh, game. I got four, that's the best you can get. Oh, that is fantastic. Um, the, the red ones are one and uh, the blue ones are ten. This was insane, like I got, I'm well stocked on rubies right now. And yes, they are rubies, like, not rubies in this game. The, yeah. the, the correct lore. Yeah, and here we have uh, everyone's biggest hero. I enjoy this meme. Lamp oil, rope, bombs, you want it? It's yours, my friend, as long as you have enough rubies. You all have been waiting for this. I know it. All right, I'm going to uh, trigger the other one. You can actually buy an extra rope now, that's great. Sorry, Link, I can't give credit. Come back when you're a little mm, richer. More shoe is this uh, absolute gold. All right, so I'm just leaving and uh, re-entering so that I have my power sword at the right hand. I'm fully stocked on life. Just makes this bit a, uh, a bit easier, basically. So uh, if you want to do a donation or two, uh, feel free. Sure. Uh, we have a $100 donation from Code and Data saying, so excited for the awfulness of the Faces of Evil cutscenes run. Keep up the good work, GDQ volunteers. Uh, runners and Doctors Without Borders. <laughs> we have a $1,000 donation from Sly saying, Sorry, Link, I can't give credit. Here's some cash instead. <laughs> we also well, he was definitely a little bit richer. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, we have a $100 donation from Sophie Iba saying, I'd give more, but I'll have to come back when I'm a little mm, richer. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Uh, let's enjoy this cutscene here, right here. Look and see Goronu. Wake up, sleepy bones. Find the living and cut their vile throats. <laughs> I love the little swag that he does at the end of that uh, little cutscene. All right, so um, this is the first dark room, and I'm going to do it completely in the dark. I'm now on the upper ledge. It's a really small hitbox that you can jump on uh, that brings you from the middle to the upper ledge. I'm glad that, that didn't uh, take me too long to get there. Let's uh, kill the guineas that are flying at me. Uh, I do want to kill the stealthers uh, here, because they give me five rubies. Selecting the rope, because I have to climb up here to get to a door. Just to make sure that they don't hit me. All right, I'm getting another cutscene. I may be hideous, but after a year of being frozen, you will beg to join me. I <laughs> <laughs> that neck alone. Oh, uh, his it's neck. Oh. <laughs> Almost as bad as the feet. <laughs> Almost. All right, so I'm doing this one. Uh, as is, like, uh, normally I would uh, go for the power swords, um, make this uh, climb a little bit easier because of all the guineas that are spawning here. I'm waiting this one out. There we go. Climb up to Goronu and let's select the fire stone so that we can burn him down. One, two, three. There we are. You can't kill me. No, no, no. 
I mean, you also own Bernier, right? You all, you all saw this. We'll never, so he we'll gave never me a life heart again. And yeah, never. I mean, he burnt through crisp. He's done. All right. So that unlocks Harlequin Bazaar. We're not going there yet. We're going to Sparefish Falls instead, and this is the absolute favorite area for me. Like, I love how absolutely stunning this area looks. The uh, small water effects and everything, like, I I feel like this really still holds up, like, uh, quality-wise. It still looks so good. And uh, especially the area that comes after this one. Uh, it's absolutely stunning, and if you do this one as smoothly as possible, it can look so cool as well. So uh, let's just get ready for that. I'm just uh, pre-sniping a few of the... Uh, Ah, Yora. Oh, yeah. uh, there we go, got 10 rubies here. Threw the bomb at that rock. Uh, some of the rocks can be thrown, uh, destroyed with one bomb, some need a power glove or 10 bombs. Uh, but it's uh, often uh, something that uh, has a bit of a misconception about the game. Okay, so this is relatively smooth. I'm, I'm okay with this. But I love that area, the whole waterfall, uh, jumping on those little rocks. And here we have the fairies. You're doing great, Link. You're our hero. Here's a life heart. We know you can beat Ganon. So like one of Ganon, they have a second cutscene, but I have to backtrack here. So I'm doing the second cutscene a little bit later. Like a really little bit. I didn't realize until I played this for a long time that you can die in the fairy fountain thing. You can, you can, yeah, you can. You can, you can like, actually yeah. fall in the water yeah. and die. Yeah, I had a really good run going, just walked off the edge like, oh, you can apparently die there. <laughs> I mean, it's the water of life. Yeah, I was too late. Yeah, that's uh, not too early. There we go. This still works. Uh, if you throw the bomb at the exact right moment, the bomb will uh, fly towards the Gliok. That was the Gliok, by the way. Um, and hit everything in one go. Like, it will hit uh, the first away uh, floating hat and it will destroy everything and you're basically done. And I threw the bomb a little bit too early there. There we go. Jumping up to this hut here. Uh, we just grabbed the key to get in the hut and here's the crone. There we go. What I that, does she have to say? I may be old and ugly, but I still know a few tricks. Bring some grapple berries. I'll show you a good one. So this was one of the things that I ran into when I was routing all cutscenes. Um, if you go here with the gravel bears in hand, you first get the item that she will make for you, and then she'll do only a part of this cutscene. So for all cutscenes, she wants to show everything. All right, so uh, enjoy these bangers. Like, this is so good. And um, I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with uh, Gam Metal. For April Fools, they made a... Uh, uh, so, uh, they made a metal rendition of this soundtrack, and it, it's so good. Like, I know it's an April Fool's uh, kind of thing, but check it out. It is really so good. Right, so let's try to snipe the Octorok that's all the way here. There we are. And all through the game, you may be wondering, uh, these are Octoroks or uh, those, those crabs, they are Gomas? I mean, it all makes sense. Um, back in the days, you had the comic series, uh, Valiant com comic series, and all these enemies are just based on those enemies uh, that are used in the comic books. They're not too, too well known, but they are just pretty exact copies. Like, they're really good uh, versions of it. It's just something that is generally not known, and people are, are just familiar with the Goma being, uh, for instance, the spider or whatnot, but it is more accurate than you would think. All right, so here we have some lore. Look what has happened. In the darkest nightmare hour, when not moon nor sun has risen, I take Zelda in my power. I shall keep her in my prison. All right, so uh, Ganon just kidnapped, kidnapped uh, Zelda while she was sleeping. Uh, I'm going to use my bell here. The bell stops all flying enemies, and that includes these uh, spinning wheels, conveniently enough. So here we have the grapple berries. That's why we didn't do uh, this stage earlier. Fall down here, this wheel is stationary and it's also the exit to the level. I'm going to use three snowballs on it before I die. There we go, fire diamonds, and we leave the stage. Now we're heading back into Spare Fish Falls. Like, again, I love the stage. stage. And um, while we're there, like, we're just backtracking, so yeah, you have time for a few donations, like, uh, I think, four or five. We have enough time. 
Awesome. We have a $25 donation from PokeyDude900 saying, got to donate for the worst Zelda game with the best cutscenes. You guys are the greatest in Koridai. We have a $25 donation from the best link saying, golly. Golly. We have an anonymous $25 donation saying, those couch commentators are such good boys. They really are, though. Like, as long as one of them stays asleep, they are. <laughs> Uh-oh, it woke up. He woke up? OK, now he's back asleep. That's fine. <laughs> Speaking of such, we have a $10 donation from Steffi Miss saying, hello, friend. I wanted to create a pet the pup train. Let's go, chat. Donation goes to the puppy's choice. <laughs> We'll have to ask what the puppy's choice is when they are awake. I bet it's not the case. Have we, have we got seen? You're doing great, Link. You are our hero. Here's some water of life. Drink, Link. I love how insistent they are. Like, drink, Link. There's nothing wrong with this water. Drink. Drink it now. Hey, you have time for one more donation before we reach the next cutscene. Sure, we have a $25 donation from Cat Related Pun saying, I made the mistake of booking a care uh, booking a haircut during Silly Block, but I managed to get back just in time for the faces of evil. Looking forward to the high quality animation and nightmare fuel. Enjoy them. <laughs> Stir the berries in the tub. Let the juices soak the glove. Let Link fight and never cower. For his gloves, a glove of power. Wow, thanks. Wow, thanks. I love the power glove. It's so bad. <laughs> and speaking of the power glove, I do want to shout out, uh, quickly shout out uh, a friend of mine, uh, Sherry Bear who is uh, doing a Power Glove challenge uh, as we speak uh, in July. Uh, he's trying to finish uh, Ninja Gaiden on the Power Glove. And that thing is bad. Like, uh, often when we talk about CDI, uh, one of the things that I mentioned are the bad controls. Like, this controller is fine. Like, it's a graphics gamepad, uh, graphic style gamepad. It's fine. The three button control is also fine. But uh, there are some questionable uh, controllers out there. I'll show you one in a moment uh, as I'm getting into the next cutscene, uh, or at least getting into the next stage. And then maybe uh, PDT in the meantime can uh, fill in a bit on that, because uh, he collects a lot of CDI stuff. Yeah, no, there's uh, some, some very interesting peripherals that exist for the CDI. There's, uh, we've got our good friend, which I think that Grandmaster's going to be pulling out in a second. Uh, and then they've got keyboards, mice, all sorts of fun uh, multimedia things. Before you face the foul fiend Ganon, you must conquer Fortress Central, where the treasure of death is hidden. Bring it to me. Be gone. I love how she says, be gone. She teleports away and she's still here. Still there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I just pulled out the, the roller controller. <laughs> it's an absolute uh, chonker. Um, you move it by rolling this ball on the on top and you have two main buttons on the side. So you just slam those. Like it's the button one and button two. Uh, also speaking of button one, button two, like uh, button one uh, hits your sword, shoots the beam and everything. Button two does, does everything else, depending on what your state is. So like if you're crouching and you press button two, it opens up the menu. If you are in front of the door, it opens the door. If you uh, aren't in front of the door, it will use an item. If you're crouching uh, and you want to uh, open the menu in front of the door, it opens the door. Stuff like that. <laughs> it would have been much better if they used uh, the 1 plus 2 button that uh, most of the game controls actually have. That almost nothing you used. Yeah. How sweet. Mwah. My husband gave me this. He's an abominum now. Here. It's not much, but it'll still carry water. All right, I'll take his bath out of this area. Uh, you know what, I'll do a quick check here. 74. Is that good enough? Yeah, that will do, that will do. All right. Uh, yeah, speaking of the roller controller, I still do want to finish these games with the roller controller. I have to fix this one up, but uh, if you want to see that happen, be sure to follow me at twitch.tv, Grandmeister. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, you'd think like, the roller games... controller is actually like a tracker ball, but no, it just does four directions and not, not them particularly well. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> it's, uh, it's going to be an absolute treat. I just have to fix the infrared sensors of it. All right, so I just bought uh, two extra sets of bombs, three extra sets of ropes. I should be good uh, on bombs and ropes uh, for the rest of the run. So we're now heading right into Harlequin. We're going to get into a cutscene right quick because uh, we'll see uh, how Harlequin uh, deals with Corridians. See how Harlequin captures Corridians? You lose. <laughs> Do you know what it means when you lose your last ruby? Now you work for me! Take him away! I mean, if you're scared of clowns, <laughs> this may not be your kind of level. Um, not at all Pinocchio ripoff either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Caridian, um what I wanted to mention here, like, uh, the game is uh, released in four different languages. Um, Besides English, it's also released in Dutch, uh, German, and French. The Dutch version of that cutscene is absolutely great. Like, uh, not just saying because I'm Dutch, you know. Like, there's just special effects that are used in this uh, in this particular cutscene. Like, you get uh, a carnival-style echo on that uh, you lose. Like, it, it just echoes through. It's perfect. It, incredibly fitting for the cutscene as as it is. But in general, like uh, the Dutch cutscenes have a lot of. Uh, personality basically um the morshu for instance uh he's a bit uh, bavarian style so he's talking in the german dutch accent it's great so this uh this is one of the most messed up areas uh, i enjoy like if if you want a nightmare fuel here you go so um we're going to the heart of this uh, pig climb up here i do want to take a death eventually so i don't mind if i get hit i did not get it okay i enjoyed this cutscene Say your chances are a million to none. But let's have fun anyway. Oh, we'll have some fun, all right. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, first take a death, obviously, because I want to be at full health. I'm going to get hit by these all masters. Now, I selected the bomb, so I will throw a bomb at the right location uh, that will kill all five all masters in one go. Here we are. And I will pick up the rubies because uh, you still need rubies uh, to use items. Now, I'll hopefully be able to avoid Harlequin's projectiles a bit. And let's kill Harlequin. There we go. Ah! Ah! Lucky shot. Golly. 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 There you go. All right, Harlequin. Uh, oh, oops, there went, went the bomb. <laughs> Harlequin is uh, one of the bosses that uh, blocked me for the longest time as a kid. We just didn't realize that you had to stab him. Like, only stabbing works, not even sword me. The stars are made of ice. Thus, the night is cold. Bring the crystal from Saragon, and I will prove the light of ice penetrates more than fire. All right, so that was uh, Odranol. He's a bit of a silly guy. He looks way younger in the cutscene than he does in his little walking animation. It really does. And did you see that uh, little sticking out butt of his? Like, it's so well animated. <laughs> Look how Militron makes his warriors. Worthless Caridian, you must be hardened with fire. Go and kill. All right, Militron is uh, yeah, more of what you would expect of villain to be. Uh, mess up the jump there, that's fine. There we go. All right, um, this is one of the hardest stages. In my opinion, like uh, especially the boss, uh, the boss can only be hit on the on the head, for instance. But uh, we have time for uh, about four or five donations. So go ahead. Sounds good. Uh, we have a five hundred dollar donation from Peak Zoro saying, "I wonder if the animators knew that their hard work would be seen decades later for charity." I know for uh, for a fact that they uh, didn't expect it to be such a meme. Um, recently. Uh, sorry to interrupt the uh, nations. Oh, you're good. Um, uh, um, one of the uh, people on the CDI Discord, uh, CDI Zelda Discord, actually got in contact with uh, some of the animators because he he's a Russian uh, himself. And uh, he he asked uh, these things. Uh, he did translate that whole interview. So uh, check out the uh, CDI Zelda Discord. Uh, you'll be able to find it back there as well. Like, uh, there's a lot of insight there that was previously not known. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> We have an anonymous $25 donation saying, I wonder what's for dinner. 
Alrighty, right. we... <laughs> well, go ahead. No, 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 I mean, uh, <laughs> there, there's no dinner this time around. <laughs> we have a um, $100 donation from RJ3, uh, that's me, saying, what did Zelda say to Link when he was having trouble opening his apartment door? Try force. <laughs> <laughs> We have a $25 donation from Dead God saying, um, CDI hype? No, seriously, I love the CDI and I uh, wish, I wish it did better. Shout out to my friends Ian and Yehal who showed me the CDI awesomeness. I completely agree though. Like, I, I honestly legit like these games. Like, they're a lot of fun, I, I feel like. All right, got oh, a double hit there. there. Oh, two double hits, excellent. Nice. Oh my goodness, this is awful! That's a lot harder than those. At this cut, it's just <laughs> so good. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that, that boss is probably the hardest one, including Ganon, to beat casually. Like, yeah. I, the first the first time I played this game, that was like two hours just trying to get to that stage. Yeah, the stage itself is already pretty hard as it is, and then you just have to hit him on the head five times, and uh, it is easiest with the, uh, with the power sword, but chances are so big that you don't have the power sword at that point, or you get hit somewhere, and you're just spamming and jumping, flailing around, and yeah, not yeah, happening got, at times. They got a very, very literal with the uh, Dodongo uh, uh, sprite for these guys here. Oh, okay. definitely. Just but literally this one... tops. We just bombed the Dodongo, by the way. It yes. happens. Link bombed the Dodongo. It's the only Dodongo will bomb, but it happens. All right, uh, so yeah, the Dodongo as well is um, one of the enemies that, uh, if you look at the Valiant uh, um, comic books, like it resembles it a lot. Like I, I didn't know that at first. I recently did uh, a video on these games, like because I legit think they, these are fun games on their own right. And, they are, they don't deserve the hate that they have gotten. Like, the cutscenes, yeah, they are bad, but it's, it's their charm, you know? Yeah, the, ga um, the games themselves are way better than you think. Like, they're yeah. not going to win any Game of the Year awards, but they are legitimately fun to play. Yeah, so uh, here we have uh, Drulek. Where are you heading, partner? I'm going to fight Slutko. Don't fight him, feed him. <laughs> Something spicy. Know what I mean? If I didn't know better, I would definitely say that uh, this was done by the voice actor of uh, Barney from uh, The Simpsons. Like, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, honestly. Seriously, it does sound like it. It's, it's not the same actor. I they, 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 they definitely couldn't afford him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with the budget they had. Yeah. All right, so let's head into the next cutscene right here. Through the eye of Glutko lies the shrine of Korridai. Oh, I'm simply famished. No! Mm. It tastes like a dyra. Perhaps just one more? He's really enjoying himself. All right, so um, I'm going to do a really tight jump here. I am actually going to use the belt just to make sure that there's less stuff moving on the screen. It makes it a little bit easier. This is like two pixels wide. I got it, excellent. Like that's a lot more tight than you would think. I'm not going to do the swag jump here. I am low on health. Oh, goody, mashed link for the main course. Like, PDT found out as well that you can uh, swag past uh, Glutko here, but uh, I'm going to do this. Uh -oh. <laughs> I we mean, we got some We definitely won't see cutscenes. him again ever, either. Yeah, he, he's dead. You saw him explode. He's, yeah, he's boss, the, boss uh -oh. never Bosses never come back. Absolutely not. I mean, you've seen one Camelon. Like, if a boss is dead, he's dead. Uh, right, so PDT found out yeah, you can actually uh, get past him uh, by jumping. Uh, I tend to take two hits there, so I would have taken that if I would have done it. Uh, I think PDT, you managed to do it with just taking one hit. You can do it with one, but it's really hard. So you, normally, if I'm not at full health there, I just don't even bother to the chance that you die there. That's a cool little skip there that you skip from one level yeah. to the other. 
it, it has a really nice setup that you do uh, the slide of the wall on the right and then you can just jump to the left and you get it every time. All right, so turn the bomb. Whoops, it's low. Probably um, haven't lost runs never. that before. There we go. This time he's really dead. This time for real. Uh, actually, uh, we just got the Book of Cardi. Uh, that means that the first fight was basically the refight of this false because it only gave 10 rubies. So yeah, we just got the Book of Cardi, and uh, if you remember, uh, Ipo, the reader, told us to come back with the Book of Cardi to read out the se secret first. Well, let, let's just do that. So I'm just doing this same thing here. I got hit by the mob lamp in the previous uh, section, so I'm just walking through here, taking a bit more damage than I normally would have. But I am still good on Firestone, so I'm I'm okay with that. If you do, want to do a quick donation here, go ahead. Sure, we have a $36 donation from Seth in New York saying, in honor of Biscuit, the face of adorable. <laughs> he truly is though, but I mean, at the moment he's on the floor. Um, he's a bit uh, overwhelmed at times by Flurry, uh, which makes sense because I mean, Puppy and everything, you know. Very uh, kind of overwhelm me as well. But very is also in the face of adorable. Look at him. Oh. Boy. Alright, here we have Ipo. Listen, such is the power of the Prince of Darkness that he can kill with a single look. Attacks against Ganon will prove fruitless unless Link attacks with the sacred book. Apparently, so, yeah. like, uh, can't read. <laughs> Ganon can't read it. It's... Let, let's make him read. See how he acts uh, when he uh, is faced with the book. Um, so after one Gamon uh, last GTQ, you may have had questions, like many questions, and I don't blame you. Um, one of them may be like, why did Ganon get imprisoned uh, with the Wonder Gamon in, uh, in the book? Uh, We'll actually show that here. I'm really low on bombs, actually. Uh, let's just select it. Uh, go to power glove. Uh, I didn't check my rubies, but that should be fine. I think um, what? Yeah. So what I'm going to do here... Um, oh, okay. Didn't have to do that, actually. O often there's a uh, Goma also uh, at the same time. There we go. Uh, yeah, what I want to do... Oh, go for it. Uh, I was gonna say this game likes to randomly just not spawn enemies sometimes. Uh, usually when you don't want it to happen. Ah, uh, I also prayed for that. That's okay. Like now, uh, two of the comas are gone. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take this a little bit more careful then. Uh, what I want to do is I want to keep my inventory, inventory full. Mostly because it makes menuing easier. Um, if I have the um, the bombs still, that means that uh, the ropes, lantern, uh, everything basically is uh, right next to each other. I'm just going to hit them. Oh, ah, my input got eaten. That's fine. I may just use the bell uh, to at least prevent uh, some of the articles. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. Shall I do it? No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not going to that far. Although, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to take the risk. I totally, I totally use the water. <laughs> yeah. Would have been fine, but not worth the risk, for sure. All right, so I want to use one bomb here, and it means that I have one more left. I'm not going to use that one. Because as you can see, like the lantern, the, uh, lamp, uh, the lantern, the ropes, ev uh, the bell, everything is close to each other. And those are all the items I'll mostly need uh, near the end. So reducing the amount of menuing you have to do uh, is good here because uh, menuing is quite slow. There we go. There we go. I, I do use the lantern here because it just makes the platform a little bit easier. Like this one is still manageable to do uh, in the dark. Yeah. But if you fall, you it's... just lose the time that you would have uh, otherwise not. Uh, yeah, you just lose your time save. Hey, it's Zelda. Hey. Hey, Zelda, wake up. 
What, Link? You've saved me! If there's a face of bamboozlement, it's this. Alright, let's uh, do the same thing. Oh, more than enough. Technically, I don't have to show this cutscene, but you get it as freebie. Because you have all been so good. Alright, so... <laughs> yeah. But if you don't actually watch a bunch of the cutscenes, you don't even realize... Those are just sort of appears there, you don't realize she's been kidnapped, you don't really know what's going on. She's like, oh, hey, it's Zelda. Oh, oh we're done already. <laughs> no, we're not. So, we're back in Sergon Cave. Um, we just got the, the treasure that we were supposed to get uh, from Fortress Centrum, and we can all also get this ice crystal. Jump here, yeah, here we go. I'm intentionally not uh, killing these because I want to take a death here to get back to the start of the screen quicker. There we go. Just makes things a bit easier. You can just uh, start moving now. This is always a bit scary because the moment you leave uh, an area like often everything that can fall from uh, from the ceiling will fall. So uh, if you just walk there, you immediately get hit by a few of the icicles. And those icicles are rough. They just like to take. There's no invincibility frames in this game, so they just yeah, they get hit by all three. Like out there is half your health, right? Yeah, like, uh, it's especially gone. it's especially bad in uh, Nortenga Absolutely. or uh, the avalanche in um, uh, Toyko Lighthouse. Uh, here we go. Yeah. This shield both sword and spear deflects, but cannot stop the vilest curse. This crystal makes the shield reflect, cursing the cursor with twice the curse. <laughs> so the besides that, uh, shield. she yeah, she uh, just gave us a reflecting shield, and uh, this time she really disappeared and actually left a ruby for us. We're not grabbing it, we're leaving it there as a remembrance. So it comes to a bit of backtracking here in the Harlequin. Because uh, we got the ice crystal, so we can hand that one in. Uh, luckily, we don't have to go all the way through here because there's a, back, uh, a little side entrance that you can't enter until you have the key from uh, Harlequin. Uh, you can enter the side entrance, but it won't lead you anywhere until uh, you have the key. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. I can just climb up now. Like, this is also one of the parts where an avalanche is just immediately destructive. Watch, watch my health. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that that just happens. <laughs> All right. So here we have oh, Ultra Noel again. Now, if we make a simple vacuum and spin the ice just so, there. There. And he got sucked in the vacuum. He's gone. But we got a lantern upgrade because apparently the power of ice is indeed uh, stronger than power of fire. I'm not questioning it. So, we're now going to uh, Shipwreck Cliff. Uh, I think this is still a uh, stage that you do a bit earlier in your route, uh, PDT? Yeah, I, I normally do this one a little earlier, just because it. Uh, we'll get our last part here, and I like being safe and getting my sixth part a little earlier, but it's technically not good to try to end like this. Yeah, it's mostly because... Uh, oh, press continue. <laughs> it's mostly that uh, if you... Um, complete this level, you get to a next level uh, that you uh, want, want a reflective shield for, uh, meaning that you don't have to move over the overworld because you're ultimately on there. My hero! Won't you please jump across that little old chasm and cut my daddy's chains? Pretty please, have a heart. <laughs> I just love how Link just squishes himself out there, out there. And she literally gave you a heart, so... Yeah, this is why it's uh, really easy to get hard as well. If you're casually playing this, uh, it's an easy one to get. Don't miss out on that one. So we have to use the winged helmet here. You can't make this jump otherwise. Uh, even though it looks like, oh yeah, but you can just fall down here and it's just fine. Yeah, there's a hidden wall. You slide the way all the way down and you're, you're dead. Please, Link, jump and cut these chains. The Arpagus are driving me crazy. So, remember Wand of Camelon and how uh, Tempered Sword is made? Thanks. Say, you have a fire diamond, don't you? Sure! Then let me fix your sword. Let's see how it works. Wow! 
I mean, it's obvious this, uh, this blacksmith is more skilled because he actually still see the diamond instead of the uh, diamond being completely smooshed across the, the sword. But uh, that's how you make an, uh, a tempered sword, basically. So now we can keep using the uh, sword beams uh, even if we're not on full health, which is convenient. Consider Lupe the most dangerous of Ganon's minions. With this ruby, I replace your soul. You will obey. Ow! Ow! <laughs> I mean, uh, good faces, bot. You'll have a field day in this one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't think that's in <laughs> It's so silly. That's a great um, one. I mean, there's a reason why this is in the silly fuck. All right. So we're just uh, going to do a, a complete as ascent in this uh, area. Uh, if you are, want to read out a few donations, uh, feel free to do so. Sounds great. We have a $25 donation from Kella saying, it's finally time for the Faces of Evil run. I stayed up late in part to see some nightmare inducing cutscenes, but mostly to see Biscuit and Flurry. Please pet those pups. Oh, I will pet those pups. <laughs> there, there you go. Oh. Okay, I'll, I'll pet some more uh, during cutscenes. That is good. I'll, I'll get them. <laughs> we have a $10 donation from Sal Wazlib saying, You're doing great, Grumpmeister. You're our hero. Here's some rupees so we can get a little mm, richer because one mil is what all true heroes strive for. Donation goes to Pupper's Choice. Oh, wow. Pupper's Choice again. <laughs> We have I mean, a uh, ninety-three. We have a ninety-three dollar donation from Pyro Demon saying one of the CDI Zelda. Oh, sorry, one of the CDI Zelda Remaster developers here had enough rupees to donate during this lo rather lovely Faces of Evil speedrun. I'm sure Harlequin and Morshu won't mind. Not much other to say than good luck with the run, Grump. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I indeed wanted to shout it out somewhere during this run. Um, there's a uh, CDI uh, Zelda uh, remaster available. Um, it has been uh, recently uh, gotten some community patches and everything. It even has a randomized like. If you just want an easy way of uh, playing this game, be sure to check it out. Uh, you can go to the CDI Zelda Discord. We'll be glad to help you, uh, send you on our way. So uh, it's great, like it goes a lot faster as well. I spy with my eyes someone who must die. Like, it had a lot of quality of life changes and everything. Like, it's uh, it's, it's generally f a fun experience still. All right, that's a highly interactive battle. Oh, whoa, what's this? Ooh. Oh, oh, okay, this doesn't happen often. There you go. I will not die. Oh. He's really that though, like, we won't see him again. Yeah, that's, that's the only boss you don't, time. That's the only boss you don't see twice. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, speaking of the, uh, the remastered, like, uh, Dopley is also working on his uh, spiritual successor to these games, like, in the same CDI style, so be sure to check that out. So keep, a, keep an eye out for that. Okay, so yeah, uh, Hermit awesome. Flats, the second uh, to last level, or, yeah, second to last level. Um, this is incredibly dangerous. The Moblins here do two hearts of damage. The Sora, which is the first time you'll see them uh, in uh, this game, will do three hearts of damage. Like, you have to be really careful. And casually, this took me a while. CTS1, there you go. Yeah, that brown thing is the Sora. Just don't question it. Yeah, I absolutely don't question things. Way cuter than the ones that have Breath of the Wild. And that is true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got uh, through the Soras, and uh, for some reason, Gornam didn't want to fist us uh, early in the stage this time. So here he is. At last, you have the vision to find my house. Now you will see the sand crumies that prevent your approach to Ganon. Go with many blessings. All right, so we just got all the item upgrades. We've seen all the cutscenes so far. We just have one stage left to go, and that's Ganon's lair. So uh, we'll head into that. <clears throat> and as we do, um, we want to do a quick, few quick shoutouts already, just to, just to get this going. You know, uh, one in particular that's uh, obviously really important to me uh, because we've had a lot of birthdays here uh, during GDQ already. Uh, 
it's not a birthday, but uh, eight years ago, um, I was at the municipality and I uh, said I do to my uh, lovely wife who has been supporting me all through this, uh, I felt, uh, all through um, my CDI speedrun uh, shenanigans. Like she really pushed me to um, start speedrunning, uh, start picking up this game in particular as well, because I love this game also. Like, just as a kid, so, such great experience with it. Um, but yeah, she has been supporting me all this way, uh, all the way through. Uh, sadly, she is uh, currently uh, commuting towards work. But uh, yeah, I did want to shout her out. Uh, I love you, Alice, Alice and uh, happy anniversary. Okay, eight year anniversary, it's great. She has been supporting me all this time. I did want to uh, at least uh, have that shouted out. All right, head onwards. Where uh, <laughs> I took it that early. Um, that the setup that I did is something that uh, works uh, every time, 60% of the time. So, um, yeah, this was not one of those. But uh, often it works, so that's good. Uh, this jump is also a lot tighter than it uh, actually looks. Yeah, that jump is super easy to miss. No, you must die! I, I just did. All right, so I'm going to use a lantern here because there's a lot of annoyance to navigate through. Um, if you do the any percent, you don't have the lantern uh, at all. Um, so you have to do this completely in the dark. It's impressive that they are able to do it. Uh, Alter Blues uh, has a great any percent time with this, and uh, Usui, who broke his uh, time afterwards. Oh. This game is really brutal in any percent. Uh, also because you're reliant on the, the ruby luck at the bridge uh, at uh, Morshu to get enough uh, enough rubies uh, to get the bombs because you don't get power glove in this uh, in this category either. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that you will miss. Uh, I'm just going to uh, chill here with uh, Militron here. He's a, he's a nice guy sometimes. There we go, just pop past it. All right, very good. Those little worm snake things on the ground are, are the hardest enemies in our game. They, they are the true end boss. They just, will just hit you over and over and over again. There's no there's no knockback, no uh, in, no uh, invincibility frames. It's just like, yep, hit you, hit you, hit you, and all of a sudden you're dead. Yeah, basically uh, they have a slight knockback, and that slight knockback is the one that gets them in range again. Like, they just barrage you with damage, and you're just done for. All right, that's the final climb. Um, so I'm going to use the... Uh, the bell to uh, the blowfish you see on, uh, on the left, it actually blows out your uh, your light, so I, I don't really want it to happen. Ah, famous lost words, you know? I'll just uh, do this again, it just makes things a bit easier. There we go. Use the bell here. There we go. And that glowy light there, that's uh, Ganon's room, so I'm going to select the book already. Let's make uh, Ganon read, shall we? Join me, Link, and I will make your face the greatest in Koridai, or else you will die. This face, this particular face, if you want Nightmare Fuel, you have it right here. Oh, Artist boss battle. Here. No! Not into the pit! It burns! So yeah, as you notice, we just captured Ganon in the book, Korodai. And in uh, one come on, we also capture Ganon again in the book of Korodai. So uh, that's why I... Personally, I feel like Face of Evil is a prequel to one Camelon. So at least that one is answered for you guys. And this is the last cutscene, so we're almost done. Ugh, why'd you do that? I just saved you from Ganon. You did not. Well done, Link. Ganon is once again imprisoned. Come. Look, already Koridai is returning to harmony. The birds are singing. Isn't it beautiful? Golly! As it is written, you, Link, are the hero of Koridai. I guess that's worth a kiss, huh? Ha! Huh. I won! And that's time. <laughs> Almost forgot, uh... Because uh, I was uh, feeding the dogs, giving them a good pet. They have uh, done really well during this run. Like, they behaved really well. Really glad that uh, they did that way. Um, yeah, thank you, GDQ, for having this game in, like, uh, and completing the Face of Evil and One Camel on the uh, chain of games. 
Like, I know that uh, PDT as well, like, uh, has been submitting this for quite some time, and I'm really glad that we finally got to show this off and uh, show off all the cutscenes that come with it. Uh, it has been an absolute blast uh, on my part. Um, quick shout out as well to the BSG community, uh, Benelux Speedrun and get Gathering. Because of them, I started playing this because when I was there for the first time for my first event, they actually had this game running on, in the background somewhere. Like uh, the sweet tunes that you're hearing right now lured me in, and I was like, ah, maybe I should speedrun this. Shout out to P P PDT on the, on the commentary here as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining me because, uh, Thanks, yeah, I mean, your route has been uh, an inspiration to me as well. So uh, if you have anything to say yourself, uh, Free. Yeah, no, um, uh, check out the CDIs on the Discord. Um, the remasters are a great way to uh, get the experience of CDI Zelda. Um, one of the downsides of CDI things is the emulation port is not great, and that is a colossal understatement. So, the remasters are a great way to get the feel of it um, without having to deal with getting all the emulation sides hey, set up. Wanna fight the forces um, of evil and big shout to Arthur Blues, Check who was the out. person who it's got easy. me involved in uh, CDI See? Zelda. And yeah, I think that's it. Just move yeah, the, the entire CGI uh, Zelda community is great. Like, there's too many people to name, especially now with uh, the remasters, like uh, uh, Gundam Spouse, uh, Melon then, uh, button one like Just too crash. many to call right out now. They, they have done so much work on the remaster speedrun as well. Yeah, and uh, if you uh, enjoyed this kind of uh, stuff, like, to uh, be sure to right. check me out uh, on Twitch as well, um, Twitch.tv, uh, Grandmeister. I tend to play climb. a lot of uh, obscure stuff, um, not necessarily bad leap. all the time, um, trying to branch out a bit from all, only bad Press stuff. Like, uh, I, I was here earlier with uh, Coca-Cola Kid as well, um, stuff like when that. Power, and I'll be playing some Ninja Gaiden on shoot. the Game Gear, so it's still obscure in that sense. Uh, throughout July, but uh, also getting back a bit into uh, one camel, I think. Uh, when I'm crouching, see if I can uh, beat can uh, GSR again, because he uh, took the record off the GDQ uh, for his challenge. Cool, huh? So, uh, need to, to get back to that. Door, move in front uh, yeah, of it thanks, like thanks for having us. Now, Thank you so much. Button two. Luckily, I <laughs> GG's. Fifty four forty six. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was good. Sister. <laughs> That game will never fail to make me laugh, and uh, judging from all the donations that rolled through, I can see everyone here loved it as well. Nightmare fuel and all. <laughs> we have a $15 donation from Sly Dante saying, I stayed up until the wee hours of the morning to see this Faces of Evil run, but it was worth it. Thank you, Grumpmeister, for helping to bring this insane bit of joy into our lives. We have a $25 donation from Tathareth saying, First time donating after years of watching. I've always found the animations in the CGI Zelda games terrifying, but now I can get a chance to hang it on my wall. Perfect nightmare fuel. We have a $100 donation from Pattern Match saying, Squadala, here's a donation. All right, with that being said, uh, more amazing runs are coming up next, but first, a quick break.
on Quick 2021 online. Still going strong in the silly block here and still some donations coming through.